please welcome Abby Kearns, Executive Director of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. morning. Welcome everybody to Basel, Switzerland. And for those of you locals, this is a great convenience for you, I'm sure. Thomas, I know this was super convenient for you. So welcome to our second event in Basel, Switzerland. How many of you in the room, this is your first summit? Wow, that's awesome. Well, welcome to Cloud Foundry Summit. We are super thrilled to have you here. This has been such an exciting year for us, and we're really excited to be back in Basel again. But I, um, I, just, I always get to have a, such a good time here in the morning with all of you, and I hope you enjoyed the video that a couple of people from the Cloud Foundry community made. We're very excited. Thank you, Caitlin and Denise. First and foremost, I want to thank our sponsors, without whom this would not be possible. Our platinum and gold sponsors, Dynatrace, Pivotal, SAP, Swisscom, Google Cloud, IBM, SUSE, and VMware. It's our sponsors that allow us to throw this event, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Also, a couple of housekeeping items. The sponsor showcase opens at 10.55, so please take a moment to go by and check out our sponsors that have booths here, um, but also because there's a, a lot of interesting new technology and new conversations that are happening on the floor there. And also, lunch is going to be provided in the foundry, the second floor foyer, every day. So have you ever made a choice that changed your life? Have you ever taken a trip that opened your mind? Maybe took a new job that launched your career? I made a choice recently that changed my life. I chose to stop going to the bank. Okay, so maybe that wasn't life-changing, but I hate to go to the bank. It's time, it's just gonna go down there. And so I decided to move all of my money to a new bank, a digitally native bank, a bank that didn't have a footprint anywhere. And for me, it saved me time, it saved me money, it was a much better experience online. But for traditional banks, customers like me scare you. I'm willing to move my money to a new bank simply because the technology is better. And this type of transformation is happening across every industry. Financial services, insurance, automotive, logistics, transportation. This type of change is happening across the board. In fact, cloud is everywhere. We've got Grocery, grocery stores are in the cloud now. You can buy a car in the cloud now. In fact, pizza delivery is even in the cloud now. And so for many of you, you're having to cobble together a variety of solutions. You're piecing together third-party solutions, building new teams, figuring out how to connect all of these things. And so for the technologists, the world has gotten really big. There's a lot of considerations you have to make and a lot of things you have to think about that both fit your needs today, but also help. how do you plan for the future when your industries are changing so rapidly? In fact, if you are a CIO, you're wondering, how do I plan for the future? How do I make sure that we're nimble enough to move forward while still figuring out how to manage what we have today, and oh, I need to also do it at a reduced cost. 
If you're an operator, an architect, you're the ones that are defining the future of your companies. You're the ones that are building the platform that will get you to where you need to go in the future. But also, you're also managing the needs of both of what you have today. And for the developers, you're creating the future of your companies. You're developing the software that's allowing your companies to be competitive in new and changing markets. But imagine what we could solve together. Imagine if we were able to pull all of those capabilities together into a single platform. And that's what Cloud Foundry strives to solve for. In fact, with over half the Fortune 500 already basing and shaping the future of their companies on Cloud Foundry, it's been an exciting evolution to watch. At the foundation, our vision, the one thing we focus on every day, is ensuring that our entire community can shape the futures of their companies on Cloud Foundry. And so that's what gets us up in the morning, and that's what we think about every single day, is how do we make that possible? So for those of you that were here last year, I ask you to imagine the possibilities. Imagine the possibilities that could happen in a cloud-native future. But today, you don't have to. Today, there are so many companies that are going to be on stage here today and tomorrow talking about how they've actually done that, how they've made those possibilities a reality. In fact, many of the companies here today and within our user community, 61% are large enterprises and 14% are small enterprises. So we're seeing a tremendous amount of momentum in the enterprise market. And to use Cloud Foundry is to love Cloud Foundry. So our users resoundingly love the platform that they're running. And why? Because it saves you time and money. On average, 10 weeks and $100,000. But also more exciting than saving time and money is the fact that these platforms that were a year ago or two years ago super small and, and early in many of the organizations that were using them are now have over 50 plus developers running on them. And for many organizations, they have over 500 applications running on it. So not only is Cloud Foundry saving you time and money, but it's moving beyond just the early proof of concept applications and into more and more production workloads that are touching millions and millions of users. But what's also great about Cloud Foundry and something we've been talking about for years is multi-cloud. Half of our users are already running across multiple clouds. And nearly every user site flexibility as a key driving force behind their use of Cloud Foundry. So as we think about the cloud native future, what is it really saying? It's saying that we're going to be running any application <coughs> on any cloud. So as you think about the changes that are happening across industries, one of the ones that comes to mind is automotive. It's changing quickly. In fact, Cars are no longer just cars that get you something to get you from point A to point B. They're connected mobile devices. And for a company like Volkswagen, how do you do that? How do you become a software company in an automotive industry? And then how do you do that across 12 different brands, bringing that same experience to every single one of your brands and touching all of your users and your customers? Over the last couple of years, Volkswagen has grown their teams. So they were here last year talking about their investments and the work they were doing. Today, that team has continued to scale up. They're now running over 2,400 instants in production. 
and they're touching over a million users. Or Allianz, who was also on stage here last year talking about some of their early work with their mobile applications. As one of the largest insurers, how do they compete in a quickly changing market where software-based decision-making and software-based engagement with customers is becoming the standard? Over the last couple of years, Allianz has grown to 350 digital factory employees and are moving a lot of their workloads and are starting to deploy all of their new applications in the cloud. Or Orange, who's been running Cloud Foundry since 2012. And as a leading telecom provider here in Europe, continue to evolve and innovate. Their Orange French site now touches millions of users. And they're continuing to touch tens of thousands of users across their other applications. Each of them are driven by a single platform, Cloud Foundry, that also allows them to run on any cloud. So if you think about three, three different companies across three very different industries, automotive, insurance, telecom, They've all chosen Cloud Foundry to shape the future of their company and allow them to compete in industries that are each individually being disrupted. But one of the great things about being here with the community is the opportunity to really reflect a lot of the work the community has done over the last year. What's been really impressive is how the community over the last four years, we're almost four years old in January, has really defined Cloud Foundry in new ways. The community itself has built up Cloud Foundry and the innovation happening there with focusing on velocity, interoperability, but most important, innovation. Velocity, Cloud Foundry is one of the largest open source communities in the world. And the platform continues to be one of the fastest open source velocity projects out there. Our contributors continue to grow year over year. And the number of commits and pull requests also increase year over year. But also equally important is innovation. And a lot of you think, that, well, Cloud Foundry, it's a four-year-old open source project. It's an almost eight-year-old technology. Is it still innovative? And I think that it is. Because we're also constantly pulling in new and emerging technologies from broader open source projects and communities. But we're also constantly innovating adding new features, new functionalities, many of which you'll see on the stages here this week, which is an amazing showcase of how far we've come, but also how far there is to go. And Cloud Foundry, as a mature technology that's in use by many of the largest, most secure enterprises, we always have to balance that. Innovation, but also making sure that we continue to work with the technologies that exist today. So not just adopting industry standards, but making sure that the access to legacy applications and systems continues to work. Over the last two years, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth of Cloud Foundry pulling in new and emerging cloud-native technologies. And I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. We've talked a lot about Kubernetes here last year. This year, there's a ton of talks on Kubernetes, but there's also just as many talks on Istio, the, the work we've, that have been done around OCI, CNI, CSI, etcd. There's a tremendous number of technologies that Cloud Foundry continues to innovate on and with. But what do we focus on at the foundation? We really focus on two key things. 
our ecosystem, and our community. Our community of members, many of whom are here today, continues to grow. But it also continues to astound me, the ideas that you have, the innovations you're driving, and the breadth of expertise that you bring to the table. But as we think about next, what's next with the community? What else can we do? Well, we're continuously figuring out ways to inspire more conversation, be it between users, holding more meetups, helping support more Cloud Foundry days, or holding two summits a year where we can bring everyone together. Because this is the opportunity for you to all share ideas amongst each other. And for the users in the audience, this is a great opportunity to communicate with other users and learn what they've done. Hear, see their battle scars, hear them talk about the work that they've done, and, and share their ideas, and, and figure out ways that we can all work better together. Also, last year on this stage, we announced the Foundry, an open source marketplace of services, a connection, as, as it were, of capabilities within the Cloud Foundry ecosystem, where you can, as a user, find service integrators, training partners, training providers, distros, or even just service support of a variety of technologies from DB services to message brokers. And I'm really thrilled to say on this stage today that number is now 5,600 services. We are the largest open source marketplace out there. That number is continuing to grow. And this continues to be our most trafficked site within the cloudfoundry.org ecosystem. Speaking of distributions, we have eight. We had a new one join earlier this year, cloud.gov, which is our first government distribution. The government, uh, the US government, and many of the governments around the world, some of which are in the room here today and are going to be speaking here later today, trust Cloud Foundry to shape the future of their organizations and their initiatives. And so it's always really exciting to point out the certified distributions that are ensuring that they're staying in alignment with the upstream. So as I wrap up my monologue this morning, we'll get to the more fun stuff later, I do want to leave you with two things. Get more engaged. We are not an open source community without you. And if you're not sure, ask one of us. Because we need your ideas, we need your innovative thoughts, and we need under to understand what we can do better to serve the community. And my second ask is to contribute to the project. If you're not sure how to submit a pull request, ask someone. If you're not sure where you can get started, because it's a very large platform, ask. We really need more ideas on ways we can continuously evolve and innovate on the platform. And each of you bring great ideas to the table, whether it's can we improve our docs in any way to make it easier for first-time users? Are the tweaks we could be making to the user experience overall? But with, this doesn't exist without each of your contributions and without those in the community continue to push it forward. Now onto the fun stuff. We have news. So last year, we talked a lot about Kubernetes. This year, you're going to notice a lot of the talk tracks. And Chip's going to talk about it more tomorrow. But we've got a lot of new emerging innovation projects that are happening. And we're going to talk a lot about these later this week. But CF Containerization and Arini projects were officially accepted in as part of the incubating projects. And for me, it really just showcases a lot of the innovative work that's happening along the edges. 
We're also announcing today certified systems integration, integrator. We are certifying system integrators. Cloud Foundry has reached the point where it is a mature technology that is being run by most of the enterprises around the world. And there's a great opportunity for system integrators to be part of that experience. And so we're working with system integrators for a certification to showcase the amount of system integrators that are actually certified and know Cloud Foundry, but have teams that can support Cloud Foundry. So for all of you SIs in the room, please go to cloudfoundry.org and sign up today. We'd love to have you as part of our ecosystem. Also, many of you know, um, if not in talking to me, at least from the desk of the ED emails that I send out monthly, I've spent a lot of time in China this year. I'm really excited about the market that's happening in China and, and the momentum that's happening there. Well, I'm excited to talk about one in particular, Cassie Cloud, which is a subsidiary of China's Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. They are running Cloud Foundry to shape the future of their organization. This platform that runs on Cloud Foundry already has millions of connected devices and powers everything from critical infrastructure to cars. So this is transforming China and the way that they're connecting a lot of their critical infrastructure. Also, we have a new member who is here. I'm thrilled to announce that HCL Technologies has joined Cloud Foundry as a gold member. And we're excited to, to have them part of the family. And I know HCL is here today, so feel free to find them and ask more information about that. And finally, we've got a lot of member news. A press release went out early this morning. Right, please check it out for news from SUSE, CJI, GrapeUp, Evoila, Stark and Wayne, Huawei, ITQ, Sneak, <laughs> and Swisscom. We are we're really thrilled that a lot of you are able to collaborate with us to do your announcements around Summit. Thank you. Um, but frankly, we aren't what we are without each of you that participate. So a huge thank you for all of you.